Hey homesteaders, welcome to our homestead. Today we're excited to start our brand new chicken coop project. But this just isn't an ordinary chicken coop because it will partially house our solar equipment for our barn. So to make this project go a little bit faster, we bought this unassembled shed kit from Home Depot. This is the Coronado, it's 12 foot by eight foot. So three quarters of the shed is going to be for the chickens and the other quarter is going to house the solar equipment because the barn itself is on a completely separate transformer. And it also houses the electricity that goes into the panel for the pump, for the rainwater reclamation and for our main well house. So it was important for us to get solar out here to the barn because the house is just a bit too far away to run wire from the panel in the house all the way out here to the barn to power all the loads. We are gonna be putting in our old grow watt system for the inverters for the house. And if you haven't seen those videos, click at the top of the screen. But right now I am just laying out the outline for the floor. This kit did not come with a floor. It was a little bit cheaper and I can just build the floor myself. It's pretty easy. And since it is just a chicken coop and it's really probably not going anywhere, we're just putting it on these pyramid blocks. Right now doing some leveling with the string and we will get everything leveled out and this floor built today. So make sure you stick around and see the entire series on this shed build and how we install the solar for our barn. Let's get to work. So in order to get everything perfect for the new chicken coop and the solar that is going to go on top of it that will power our barn, I needed to take down half of this willow tree. It was just leaning over and this is the perfect spot for that coop, so it had to come down. It's not the best firewood, but we will burn it anyway. Now that we have our first two sides level and square, I need to cut the floor joists because the overall width for a sheet of plywood and for the shed, this particular shed, is eight feet. And these are eight feet long, so I need to cut off three inches to accommodate the rim joists. All right, the rim joists are cut, the end joists are cut, got all the center joists cut, and now it's time to get this thing together. Well, it might not look like it, but the camera enhances the light. It's actually extremely dark out here right now. So I will see you tomorrow. Welcome back, it's a new day. It's time to get this floor on, and then I'm gonna dive into the shed kit get all the lumber out for the walls, start putting the walls up. Now I'm gonna to need to modify those a little bit because I am putting the solar equipment room on the end. So I'll need to frame out for a new door on that side. But other than that, I'm just gonna follow the kit instructions on the other three walls. Keep in mind, if you're building something like this for you to inhabit, like a tiny house, then any treated lumber needs to be on the bottom for the floor. And it needs to remain 18 inches above the ground to prevent any rot. But for this one, it's obviously less than 18 inches above the ground. That's no problem, it's just a chicken coop. Now let me show you what we are doing on the end to protect us a little bit. These are made to wick away moisture through these channels right here along the sides, but this is still gonna need maybe a little bit of protection. We're gonna use some used motor oil, it's an old trick, on the bottom of this treated and around the edge to protect it a little bit longer from the elements. Now as an example, these pyramid blocks are made for a four x four to go down and sit in the center. Now a lot of people will do this, they'll put it on the inside of their uh, floor joist here, on the rim joist and the end joist, screw it in and then center this block on this and drop it in. But this end grain on this four x four will wick moisture up quicker than if it's sitting on the side grain like this. Okay, now it's time to get these walls together. What I'm liking so far is the wood that I'm pulling out of the kit itself is nice and straight and not a whole ton of big knots. I mean, there's little knots all over the place. It's not great quality lumber, but at least it's two by four and it's straight. And all the walls in the shed kit are 24 inches on center. 
So what's cool about this Heartland Shed is they actually give you Grip Right branded uh, boxes of nails inside the kit, which is cool. So I'm gonna lift this wall into place. It's not that big, it's only a six foot tall wall or a little bit over. So I've screwed in some blocks at the edge of the uh, rim joist and that's gonna prevent the wall from slipping out on me when I lift it up from the other side. And then also I've got a brace here to prevent it from falling back on me that way. When everything's up, we'll attach it to the floor. So things are coming together well. I'm going to do the front wall before the end walls because that's just the way they designed it. Some framers frame from wall to a corner, from a corner to the next corner and the next corner, but this one is the front and the back first and then the, the end walls go in between those. And I will get the end wall up tonight and I'm going to connect it because you can see that the back wall there is racking a little bit. So I can put another brace on it, but it should be stable enough for me to be able to build the end wall and get it attached and then that'll stop it from racking overnight. Or you can choose to put a piece of siding on the wall to prevent it from racking also. Got this far in the project and I forgot the sweet framing hammer that my mom got me for Christmas last year. Sorry mom, it's got this cool magnet on it to hold that nail. Two walls done, one more to go tonight. Look at that, beautiful. Now we are somewhat stable. I'm just gonna drive this into the ends of the wall, probably with another screw just to hold it. So this is the end of part one because I need to go buy more framing lumber and an exterior door for the other side for the solar equipment room. I'm also going to be extending the roof a little bit to accommodate a few more solar panels so that end gable will extend out over kind of like a covered porch. And then I also need to buy framing lumber and some sheathing for the interior wall to keep that partitioned off from where the chickens are going to be. So those chickens will be in this big area on this side and the solar room will be on that end. Now go click on this series of videos right here which is in our entire playlist on how we installed two different solar systems. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.